So this is my metal roof seam test apparatus. I would have liked to do more with R panel instead of corrugated, but really corrugated has the more difficult seam anyhow. So I think uh, this will work. So I do have it at an incline. That's a two by two or about 13 inches. So it's really close to a two by 12 pitch. Uh, not exactly. Uh, maybe like one and three quarter by 12. No big deal there. But what we want to test are different methods for securing and sealing the horizontal seams on a metal roof. And how do we simulate movement? Well, with movement. So I've rigged them all to where I can put a scale in. I'm not 100% interested in what the scale readings are, but it's pretty interesting to know anyhow. And I can pull once they are cured. So pretty low tech, but should give us some good data and we'll check back. So the first one that we're gonna test is I've, I've done silicone roofs for a very long time. And the standard practice there is the sacrificial tape method. So we're gonna divide that seam pretty evenly. And the idea here is that the, uh, the coating can handle the movement, but we just need to give it some space. So this tape should break down and be the part that rips rather than the uh, coating. You wanna get that down there. And yeah, I know, it looks easy when you're doing it on eight inches and it does get rather cumbersome when you're doing it across a big long, you got a hundred foot horizontal seam, um, something that way. Uh, it, taping's a pain, I get it. But horizontal seams are a pain as well. The next one we're gonna do, this is a typical fabric back. Uh, it's like a polyester. There's also fleece back ones. Doesn't really matter. Uh, what I don't want you using is the, uh, the shiny back butyl tapes. Uh, that shiny back just doesn't give the uh, ecodor much to bond to. So anything with either fabric or fleece will be just fine. And then just like on the other one, we just want to get a good bond going here. And these tapes have a bit more flexibility and everything that way. Again, making it look a bit easier on an 8 inch surface. But go and the next two I'll do once I've got some product mix now especially if we're doing sacrificial tape we want to get a nice thick layer going and if you're noticing that I didn't use the proper screws that is correct this is just a mock-up those were easier You know the difference. Now, if this were full scale, I'd be pouring out of a much bigger bucket right along with C. And generally, kind of brushing over and up. Gravity's going to do its thing. Like I said, this is nearly a 2 and 12 pitch in this case, so. Now, next tape. Now on the next two, I, uh, I 
should have done them all with the wings out this way. The next two I did the wings down, so to prevent a false positive, I'm only going to come to about right there on either of these. Because if I try and coat the entire thing, well, I could end up getting a false uh, reading just because I've now glued the metal to the uh, to the wood. So this one's going to be a three-course one. I really don't recommend this on metal roofs. You'll see why here in a second. It's even on a small scale, this is going to be a pain. And when you're doing it on a big scale, it's just going to be a colossal pain. Um, and the thing about three coursing is you really got to get all the air out. If you leave any air, you're just creating a weak spot. So anywhere that that seam stands up, you got to get that out of there. And as you move one side, another side wants to go. Now, I will give you that in reality, these seams will not be quite as mobile and ready to move as mine are here, but you'll also be working on a much bigger scale. And that makes a difference too. And just logistically, I would say this method is already proving to be just way too slow for our purposes when we're trying to do a long, long roof. So you can see these are running. That's okay, it's not running anything to where I'm pulling from. So once that cures, we'll be good to go. Neither of those methods we can do really quickly. Um, so last one, we're gonna do um, no tape at all, we're just going to use a thickener. Generally speaking, with Ecador, I'm not the biggest fan to make some tape in. The product is, in most cases, significantly stronger than any other coatings that you're going to be working with. And we don't need all of that strengthener and everything that way. We may need some thickener to get it to do what we want it to at times. But we don't need to strengthen it per se, because it is just such a strong coating. There's a variety of thickeners that you can use. My pre personal preference is crushed walnut. You can use any thickener you like for the most part. Now, what we've got is a trial grade green Ecador. Take that, take that, and while we're doing that, we've got our seam there. We really want to be pushing under, up, and under that seam as much as possible. You can see how nice and thick that gets, and it's really easy to work with on these details when you thicken it like that. So it works nicely. Also, a great way to do all your fasteners and everything that way is by whipping it up trial grade like that. So, there we go. We will check the results tomorrow. Let's see how our tape testing went. We'll uh, up the scale see what kind of numbers we're getting. I don't have a target number, I just want to see how each uh, performs with some movement, but 
the scale gives me an easy way to pull. And uh, so we may as well get some numbers out of it anyhow. So first one is using the piece of sacrificial tape. The uh, initial thought on this one, add a two and 12 pitch. We're not getting the product super thick over that uh, type of seam. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. I'm not even able to force any movement here. I'm maxing my muscles out here. All right, so I would say the sacrificial tape works well against movement. Let's try. Next was the fabric topped. Uh, this is fabric top uh, butyl tape. I think it was a butyl and EPDM. Let's see how that does against movement. Ow. Starting to detect a theme here. Ultimately, I'm thinking that Ecuador does well against seam movement. <laughs> uh, next one was the three course fabric. Um, this one would be a pain from an application standpoint, but I had it, so let's test it. moving a bit but obviously no break in the product and the last one was the thickened Ecuador so let's see how this one does Out of all of them so far, I would say the thickener is providing the least movement. That's tough stuff. Um, I don't know. I'm going to play around with this some more, see if I can get any of them to actually move. But I would say all four methods at this point seem to be quite successful. So just to double check my results. I peeled, not easily mind you, but peeled away the only sample that would come off was the three course sample. What I wanted to check was just to make sure that I hadn't accidentally locked these uh, samples down some other way because I was getting so little movement. But with that tape gun, you can see, we're getting plenty of movement. So I'm back to my initial assertion that all four methods worked well um, I would probably caution against using the sacrificial method on a steeper like a 2 and 12 anything uh, like that just because you can see that it's gotten pretty thin at the seam whereas the fabric tape trapped a lot of the ecador and where we're thicker we're stronger obviously so that would be my only takeaway from this but uh, certainly all four uh, exceeded expectations.